This is not the usual packaging. We've seen some different things over the years. This one, we don't really know what we're about to encounter. I'm told that it might be challenging, which is why I've brought you here. This is Will, ladies and gentlemen. We did not coordinate our outfits today. Yeah, what's up with that? Wooden puzzles. You do that, and I'm gonna take a look at this. Oh. Hmm. Here oh, we go. Oh. Take this one out. Oh, okay. We got something here. Number five. I'm gonna attempt this one. Oh. Have you seen this one before? No. Oh, there you go. Four. Two for two. Hmm. Oh. There's a dice in there. What? The six is in white and the rest are in black. It's a six. Four, five, six makes sense to me. No dice. Five. Four, six. Five, four, six. Five, six, four. <laughs> All right, so a special product calls for a special unboxing experience, hence the challenge of getting into this particular package. But the device is exciting in and of itself. This is the Yoga Book 9i. I had seen clips of this thing from CES. I was intrigued to say the least. A dual screen device. It's hard to even call it a laptop because I think there's a lot of different ways in which people are going to use it. Might dock it in this configuration. Might fold it all the way around and use it as a tablet. They might use it in tent mode. Extremely versatile. By the way, this unit that they've sent over here is a production sample. Some of the software and stuff I can't really test extensively, but it's still totally worthwhile to look at. We've seen folding and bending displays, but maybe the optimal solution for a device of this form factor is just two different beautiful OLED panels, sandwich them together in an extremely thin and light package. Well, what about a keyboard? How do I type into this thing? Obviously you could use an on-screen keyboard, which would be fine if you're trying to travel extremely light, but also you do have a keyboard attachment. This guy can sit in front of the laptop, sit on top of the laptop, can also sit at the top portion. And what this will do is activate a trackpad section on the lower portion of the display. Many different configuration options. Maybe this is slightly more comfortable for you to have it over here, or maybe you don't want to have it on the display at all. And this is an origami style, extremely lightweight, stand. I was a little bit apprehensive about this when I first saw clips emerging with it. It turns out that it's actually surprisingly robust. It clips together like that, sits on the table, and then this guy slots in. And you might have been worried about it, but this can go anywhere with you. Check out how small that footprint is. It's pretty wild. Like, where do you put the audio? So they figured out a way to work it into the hinge, and that's putting it beautifully at ear level. Now try to think of another way that you can carry around this type of screen real estate in a package in a form factor that's this tiny, a specific dual screen settings to allow you to kind of configure things, control the brightness of each display independently or automatically. You can have dual screen wallpaper, virtual keyboard and touchpad settings, cross screen browsing. Look at all the different potential configurations. You can also go this way with it. You can imagine for software development, for coding, or even just for web browsing, social media management, all types of different uses. The beauty is it's just so versatile. You still have tent mode. So this will stand on its own with limited desk space and still get this thing placed all the way back to traditional laptop like setting. So as you can see, the keyboard pops up now. It's all about meeting your personal criteria for work. You have options here. It's actually a pretty big on-screen keyboard. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. You know what? If you're used to typing on screens, then this is actually, it's really not that bad. You can replace it with this. Jumps over 
I actually put a typo on the, on the real keyboard. This keyboard is pretty nice. Obviously, it connects wirelessly. Another thing I should mention at this point, how solid the whole thing feels. Very robust feeling construction. Really sturdy. There's a tab on the front for lifting up the screen. You have this nice easy spot to reach. Thunderbolt connector on this side, which also works for power. There's two more Thunderbolt ports. Very thin and light device, yet you're still getting some pretty decent expansion. Turn off the front-facing camera with this mechanical switch and then the power button's over there. And an interesting color choice as well. Touchscreen is obviously there as well. And it goes a step further. You can use the included pen for sketching, note-taking. You could fold this thing all the way around into tablet mode. Very comfortably hold this like this, get some sketching sketching done, artists, Photoshop work. It's kind of wild how many different things this aims to replace. The angle Lenovo is taking here is sort of one device that can do a lot of different things, to say the least. It can be your tablet, it can be your convertible, it can be a dual screen workstation, uh, it can be docked, it can have the external keyboard, it can be a drawing tablet, and so forth. Power brick is actually pretty slender for a 65 watt. What kind of specs are you gonna be getting in this device? It's gonna feature the 13th gen Intel Core i7, 1355U or 1335U, so i7 or i5, targeted at low power consumption and long battery life. Display specs, which are extremely important. You guys know I'm a huge fan of OLED. This is dual 13.3 inch, 2.8K, 400 nit capable OLED displays. 100% DCI-P3, 16 by 10 touchscreen as well. You have everything that you're looking for. You're gonna get Windows 11 Home or Pro. It's gonna have integrated Intel Iris XE graphics, 16 gigs of LPDDR5X memory, storage configuration, either 512 gigs or uh, one terabyte PCIe SSD Gen 4. 2.2 watts and 2.1 watt Bowers & Wilkins speakers featuring Dolby Atmos. Not something that I'm gonna test at the moment since this is a production sample. So Lenovo is stating that battery life, you can see up to 14 hours hours of video playback, but that is on a single screen mode. Screens tend to take up a fair amount of power. They consume a lot of power, but it's not gonna completely wreck your laptop if you like to have both screens on at the same time and why wouldn't you? There's about 10 hours of video playback in an optimal scenario using both screens at the same time. So 10 versus 14. All of these accessories are also going to be standard, which is kind of interesting. They're not gonna nickel and dime you and sell you everything separate. Instead, in the box, you're gonna get the pen, folio, and the Bluetooth keyboard. So the keyboard is gonna fit in here like this. Like this. Then like that. Ooh, check it out. The keyboard actually stores in this folio and so does the pen, a pretty lightweight package collectively. I'm noticing the magnets all over the place now. The cool part there is that they're making this stuff standard. I don't have a price point at the moment, but at least you get everything. This is a whole different level of clean. 1.38 kilos puts it in that three pound area. It's actually amazing that they've got all these screen components and yet the weight hasn't increased substantially when compared to having a keyboard in there instead. So many different configurations. It's uh, endless. You have a wonderful multimedia machine for content consumption with the variety of orientations you can put it in. So many of our applications and the type of work we're doing is going online these days as well. Might not need a tremendous amount of horsepower in your laptop and instead you need just some beautiful displays, some versatility of orientation. That is the Yogabook 9i. When you pop this baby open, let me tell you, you're gonna be turning some heads when they see that second display light up. Good job, very cool Lenovo.